The Puma Velocity Nitro 3 is the brand's do-everything daily trainer. And after three versions and some minor refinements and tweaks, is it still Puma's perfect training partner? When I decided to start covering more brands on this channel, Puma was one of those brands that I was most excited to get to. Now, I've never owned a Puma shoe in my life. Not just a Puma running shoe, just a Puma sneaker in general. But I've been watching what Puma's been doing since 2021 when they relaunched running, and I've been very intrigued. And I've been waiting for the right time to jump in. Well, now that we have the Velocity Nitro 3, the time is finally right because I love a good basic daily trainer and this really is a very good basic daily trainer. Starting with the specs on this shoe, we have 36 mil of foam in the heel, 26 mil of foam in the forefoot giving you a 10 mil drop. And I'm gonna say you feel the 10 mil drop in this shoe. Now, a lot of the shoes that we have, including in the basic daily trainer category in 2024 are soft compressive foams. So the drop in them is more of a reference point. It's not exactly accurate. But in this shoe, the drop is pretty spot on because the foam that's in this shoe, which we will get to, is not the type that you sink into. So you very much feel like you're on a platform and that 10 mil drop is very accurate. Now this shoe weighs 9.2 ounces or 262 grams, which puts it on the heavier side of the basic daily trainer category, really any trainer category. But for a do-it-all, go-anywhere daily trainer, I don't mind a little extra weight, especially when the build quality is as high as it is in this shoe. And training in a shoe that's a little bit heavier, I really don't mind. So I don't mind that weight. Um, and on foot, this shoe does not feel that weight. It runs much lighter than it actually is on paper. Let's start with the upper and the fit of this shoe. Now, the story of this upper is that there kind of isn't one, and that's a very good thing. It's a very good engineered mesh upper, but it's not going to win any awards. It's nothing you're going to get excited about, but it works really well. It's soft and conforming to the foot, even straight out of the box. I've had no issues with that. There's ample padding in the heel collar. The heel counter is stiff enough. But with the Achilles flare and the padding that's back here, there's a little pocket back here. You should have no heel lift issues. The eyelet chain is simple, does what it's supposed to do. But the thing I'm gonna say about this shoe overall is that it's very long. It's a very long shoe. Now, a lot of people have said the fit of this shoe is very narrow. I have sort of a middle of the road foot. It's neither wide nor narrow, but it is high volume. I'm not finding the upper fit to be overly narrow. It's more the entire shoe is very narrow. The upper has stretched in the past 50K or 30 miles that I've run in this shoe, and I've definitely felt everything sort of open up up here, and it's given me a little bit more room. So I would say if you have a normal to narrowish foot, you're gonna have no problems in this. If you have a moderately wide foot, I also think you'll be fine in this. If you have a very wide foot, this is probably not the shoe for you, not just from the upper, but just for the shoe overall. And we'll get to that a bit in the ride. There's also the power tape technology. There's a lot of technologies that Puma's using that they've trademarked and they've given names. Power tape's one of them. I believe the power tape is only right here and that's on the medial side in the arch only to kind of help with some pronation support. Um, we'll talk about pronation a bit as well. But overall, the upper just sort of works. The tongue is a booty style tongue, so it fits in there and stays in place. It's got this sort of triple top on it, which seems like it was gonna be annoying, but it's given me no problems. The eyelet chain, again, is very simple, but it's very long. So getting your foot into this shoe takes a little effort. You need to loosen this all up a little bit more than you would expect to get your foot in there. But once your foot's in there, you get everything tightened down. The lockdown is extremely good in this shoe because of how long this feels. So overall, I love the upper. I think the fit's really good, at least for my foot. But again, if you have a very wide foot, this is probably not gonna be the one for you. And I also went true to size. I got this in my size nine US men's. And again, I wouldn't want this any longer. I don't have ample room in the toe, but 
I also couldn't go down half a size to an eight and a half either. I think true to size is spot on for the sizing of this shoe. Let's move to the midsole now because that's really where the magic of this shoe is. When Puma relaunched running in 2021, they wanted a real statement technology across the line. And that statement technology is nitro foam. Now, because Puma running is a brand new line to me, brand new shoes to me, I watched a ton of reviews about the previous Puma models, the Velocity, the Liberate, the Deviate. And I'm going to say that most of the reviewers who did mention the chemistry of the foam got it wrong. The foam, the Nitro foam is a supercritical foam, but it is not a supercritical EVA or PIBA or TPU foam. It's actually a supercritical TPEE foam. And that comes directly from the product line manager of Puma Running. He said that they started with a TPEE foam for Nitro because they wanted a better material for a better starting point. And I would have to agree, the Nitro foam in the shoe is kind of special. But we have seen a supercritical TPEE foam elsewhere, mainly Adidas Lightstrike Pro. And what's kind of crazy to me about this shoe is that if you would have taken all the branding off this shoe and just given it to me or blindfolded me and put this on my foot and asked me what I was running in, I would have said that this was an Adidas running shoe because the TPEE foam in this shoe, the Nitro Foam feels very similar to Light Strike Pro from Adidas. It's not. I believe what Puma is doing with their TPEE foam, their supercritical TPEE foam, is they're engineering it for stability and durability, where Adidas is really engineering Light Strike Pro for maximizing energy return, which makes sense because Puma Nitro foam is a training foam. Adidas Light Strike Pro is their racing super foam. So it makes sense they have different properties. But I will say the energy return of this uh, Nitro foam is very similar to uh, Adidas Light Strike Pro. Now, if Adidas Light Strike Pro's resiliency, the energy return, the rebound of that foam is a 10, I would put Puma's Nitro foam, the one that's in this shoe, probably somewhere around a seven. So you're getting that spring-like rebound, but it's not as extreme as Light Strike Pro can be. And again, for a trainer, that makes complete sense. This second foam that's in this shoe is just a basic EVA. Puma calls that their Pro Foam. That's the carrier foam under the Nitro Foam, which is there for stability. And to kind of take the edge off the Nitro Foam. And again, it's a configuration that we've seen across a lot of Audi Zero shoes from Adidas. And it's a configuration that we see quite a bit in Puma's other shoes in their running line, and it works quite well. And since I'm being precise about Puma's foams, Puma does have another Nitro foam. They call it Nitro Elite. Now, Nitro Elite is a totally different chemistry than this Nitro TPE E supercritical foam. Nitro Elite, which is what's found in the D8 Nitro Elite shoe, is actually a supercritical EVA PIBA blend. So totally different chemistry than this shoe. But the Velocity Nitro 3 only has the TPEE supercritical foam or just standard Puma Nitro foam. Moving to the outsole of this shoe, a lot of people have talked about how good Puma Grip Rubber is. And you have full coverage Puma Grip Rubber on the outsole of this shoe. Now, I'm not finding Puma Grip to be that special. It's as good as any standard in-house rubber from any other running shoe brand. It's definitely not Continental Rubber that's on the Adidas Adi Zero shoes, but in wet, dry, asphalt, concrete, um, there's some leaves, really anything I've run this on, it's gripped just fine. But what I really do like about this shoe is this is a basic standard daily trainer that has full rubber coverage. That's something I expect from this class of shoe because I want to be able to take this shoe anywhere. And I'm confident because of this beautiful rubber outsole that I can take this shoe anywhere and I have. I've taken it on pretty much every surface that I would normally run on and it's performed exceptionally well. Now I will say from a durability standpoint I am getting a little premature wear here on the lateral uh, forefoot edge. Again this is where I land as a forefoot striker and I'm really harsh on this area, especially on this shoe, my right shoe. So I am getting a little wear right here, but again, I'll keep an eye on that. This is a shoe that I'm pretty sure I'm going to get well over 100 miles in. So I will probably come back and report on the durability of the outsole in later videos. 
Now, with all the specs and features out of the way, what is it like to actually run in this shoe? Well, the thing that stands out to me about the running experience of this shoe is this beautiful, traditional geometry. There's no extreme rocker in here. This is just a very traditional geometry shoe that's very flexible and allows me to dictate how I want to run in this shoe. And for a daily trainer that I'm going to be doing the bulk of my weekly mileage in and bringing anywhere, I want that in that daily trainer. I don't want the shoe dictating how I should run in it. I want to be able to just run in the shoe. And on foot, the best compliment I can give this shoe is that you put it on and you go out on your run and it disappears. <laughs> it just lets you get on with the run. It doesn't get in the way. It doesn't keep waving a flag saying, look at all the technology in this shoe. It doesn't keep reminding you it's there. It just disappears and lets you get on with your run, whatever you're going to go do. And it's a beautiful feeling. I think Puma has absolutely nailed the geometry of this midsole. It is perfection. Now, the second thing I'm going to say about the ride of the shoe may be a good or bad thing, depending on what your preference is for a running shoe. For me, I like this. Given that this is a supercritical TPEE foam, it is a firmer riding shoe. The foam in this shoe is not the type of foam that's squishy or that you sink into. It's very much a foam that you always feel like you're on top of. Even when the shoe breaks in and there is a definite break in period for this shoe, you still feel like you're on top of the foam. So the 26 mil in the forefoot and the 36 mil in the heel with that 10 mil drop, you feel that the entire time you're in this shoe. It doesn't go away. You don't sink into this foam. Now, I like that. I like a firmer foam. I like a firmer foam that has higher resiliency. And again, this is not the highest resiliency foam. It's not as high as Light Strike Pro from Adidas, but it's, it's better than a lot of training foams. And I actually really like that. But if you don't like feeling like you're on the foam and you're running on top of a platform, this may not be the ride that you're going to like because you definitely do not sink into this shoe. I mentioned a break-in period for this shoe. Very much like Adidas Lightstrike Pro shoes, this shoe has a definite break-in period. In fact, I've now put 50 kilometers or a little over 30 miles into this shoe. And at 40 kilometers, this shoe completely changed. And I remember being on the run and vividly feeling that transition because the previous a couple runs and maybe the first 10K of that run where I, I clicked over uh, 40K, this shoe was a little harsh and I would feel it in my feet. I wouldn't say my feet hurt, but I was maybe a little bit more aware of my feet than I expected to be for a daily trainer. But at that 40K mark, and I remember the straightaway I was on, and I remember ticking right over 40K, the shoe just changed. I remember just thinking, wow, that's a very deliberate break-in period because now the shoe is very flexible. Again, this is not a soft shoe you're going to sink into, but it definitely, because of the flex, it was much more cushion. And the uh, kilometers I put in after 40K have been much smoother, much nicer. And this shoe really has broken in nicely even more extreme than an Adidas Adi Zero shoe with Light Strike Pro. This shoe needs at least 30 to 40K um, to break in. And once it does, it feels wonderful. And lastly, I mentioned in the fit that this is a long shoe. Now, as I said, for my foot, the fit isn't overly narrow, but the shoe is very long. And you can kind of see that this way if you're looking at the bottom of the shoe. Now, what is surprising to me is that it's long and it's fairly narrow. If you look at the width of this shoe, and I'm talking about the shoe itself, not just the upper, but the foam here, it's a very narrow platform. I'm going to say if you overpronate, this may not be the best shoe for you. Because if you look at this shoe head on, you can see that the medial side of the shoe is very kind of straight down. If anything, this shoe kind of it leans over the medial side. It's almost designed to kind of lean inward a little bit. Now, I was a little shocked by that, and I actually went back to the Puma store to look at other models. I was wondering if there's something wrong with the, the shoe that I got. 
But all the other velocity nitro threes that I looked at all had that sort of inward lean to them. So if you overpronate in the shoe because of how high of a platform it is and because of how narrow it is and, and how straight, if anything, there's a little, little lean inward, um, this may not be the best shoe for you for overpronation. But for me, as a forefoot striker who supernates, look at this lateral side. There is a big outrigger here and there's a big sort of uh, stabilization of foam over here where when I land right here, and again, four foot striking supinate, so I'm landing right here on the outside edge. There is a ton of foam out here that's really absorbing the impact and bringing me forward and letting me toe off. For a supinator or a four foot striker, this shoe is wonderful, but it's just a weird design quirk. And I think um, Puma's designers were aware of this. That's why I think the power tape is here on the medial side and the arch to kind of help alleviate some of the pronation. But this shoe is just a very tall, narrow platform, and it really does feel that way often. So again, if you overpronate, it would be something I would really consider looking at this shoe. I would at least try it on and see how much it encourages your foot to pronate inward, because it could be problematic for some runners. One last little thing I'm going to mention is that unlike a lot of the other shoes in the daily trainer, performance trainer category that I've been running in over the past few months, this shoe is very consistent across different foot strikes. If you're a heel striker, mid foot striker, or four foot striker, you're going to get a very similar experience in this shoe because the nitro foam is dispersed across the shoe well enough where you're getting a very kind of similar experience no matter where you're initially striking in this shoe. I can't say that about a lot of the other shoes I've been running in over the past couple of months because some of them have felt that they're very much designed for a four foot strike or a heel strike. This shoe just seems to be designed to work for everyone. So it's another nice touch from the design and engineering team around the shoe just to make it consistent for no matter what your foot strike is. Overall, I'm very impressed with the Velocity Nitro 3, but the standard daily trainer category is a very competitive category to me. And it's one that I actually love. It's one that I'm gonna cover quite a bit on this channel moving forward. Now, we have some other heavy hitters coming out in this category. Um, in the next couple months, mainly the Nike Pegasus 41 and the Adidas Adi Zero SL2. I am definitely going to do some versus videos with um, uh, comparing those shoes to the Velocity Nitro 3. And I'm going to be running quite a bit more in the Velocity Nitro 3 because it's actually one of those shoes that I feel like I'm going to get to 100 miles fairly quickly and I'm probably going to go beyond that. So I definitely will be back with some versus videos with some of the new daily trainers that are coming out this year and a post 100 mile or full review of the shoe in the coming months. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you find this content useful, consider subscribing. You'll see more content from me pop up in your feed. If not, drop a like on this video because it helps this channel continue to grow, which I always appreciate. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.